Hello everyone. Uh, so today uh, I wanted to share a quick video on JCL fast track. Okay. So in this I'm going to cover end to end complete JCL in a single video uh, within couple of minutes. So without wasting any time, so just I wanted to get started. So we before we get started, so just uh, I wanted to give an overview on why JCL is needed. JCL is used for executing the third party programs or on a IBM utilities and uh, it is used for processing the large volume of a data from uh, copying from a PS file to feed a PS file or data set to data sets and uh, testing the COBOL programs and an IBM software for programs, submitting a report to printers or transferring the data set to a different server or the printer or uh, transmitting from one system to another system that is from mainframe to Windows server or mainframe to Unix server so that way we can use so these are the different purposes and uh, and also you can compile both batch and online programs and uh, you can execute the batch programs creating or deleting a multiple data sets or sorting the data with all uh, applied filters, copying the data set from one, one data set to multiple data sets and also you can create the exam data sets right so these are the different things uh, that JCL can do so now let's connect to mainframe and uh, let's do some practical things okay the first thing I wanted to discuss is about the job card right so let me first thing is a job card okay let me connect to the program here okay what is a job card job card is a combination of both the uh, uh, keyword para job operand they call it as a job operand by the job name uh, having an accounting information followed by the programmer name or the job information and then followed by the keyword and the positional parameters so when I say uh, keyword parameters and the positional parameters so so within this uh, now a job card is a combination of a job operand job name uh, uh, accounting information programmer name and the keyword and positional parameters right so within this uh, which one is a keyword parameters uh, so these all are keyword parameters and the positional parameter is this and the accounting accounting information and uh, uh, this programmer name is a positional parameters this is at the job card level so this all together combined we call it as a job card right okay <coughs> and three three things that ne we need to note uh, in a JCL is one is a job statement exit statement and DD statement all these three together combined to form a, a JCL so this is what we know right so and another important point that we need to know is uh, knowing about the keyword parameters and positional parameters right so when I say keyword parameters and the positional parameters okay so <coughs> okay okay oh, sorry okay so parameters that are used at the job is a class message class message level priority notify and type run right so class message class message level uh, notify uh, and type run so what is the uh, what is why class is used the class is used to uh, display a some m m o a uh, what we can say like uh, it is used to display uh, whether uh, uh, what we can say it's a system defined number uh, with some CPU time it can range from A to Z or uh, Z uh, Z to I mean uh, sorry zero to nine it is a uh, it is called as a keyword parameter right and uh, based on the CPU time the main objective is to cut categorize the CPU time and in the same way message class also we have message class uh, again it is used to route some diagnostic messages to specific desi destination like spool printer so that one so message level you have uh, uh, what type of a messages that you want to uh, display it's a job level or uh, exit level or the DD levels you wanted to notify when you complete when you run this job so how do you want to notify either when you specify this UID or when you submit the JCL so you will get the messages on top of here and at the same time if you you can also specify a, a user ID and another one that we have is a priority 
if you want to change the priority of the job you can change it notify we have done and type run is equal to scan scan so scanning means it will check uh, whether there is an syntax or semantic errors uh, within your jcl so you can use type run equal to scan right so that's it about the job card so then uh, coming to the next one so as i said uh, what is a jcl jcl contains of three statements the job statement exec and a dd statement within uh, how many job statements you can code within the jcl only one and how many exec statements you can uh, write uh, we call this exec as a step or an activity so how many activities you can write within a jcl so there can be it can be a 255 the maximum is 255 in real time we use either 10 or 15 uh, as a maximum steps or sometimes 20 so but this is the actual thing that is uh, uh, applied in the real time but we never used i i mean i never used the 255 exit statements uh, then coming to the dd statement this is a data definition uh, we can call it as a data definition where we specify the file names right so and here this is uh, we call this as an activity or uh, exec level statement so this here uh, coming to the exec part so what do you have this program is a positional parameter so where you specify the program name so ifbr14 is a ibm uh, supplied utility and exec is a keyword and you have a step name and coming to the step name so it's uh, so the minimum bytes required is one and the maximum is eight so as a standard it is better always to have a uh, eight bytes dd name and, uh, and and depends on you so but in real time so we use a uh, eight bytes dd name okay i mean uh, say a step name okay and next coming to the data definition so you have a system defined dd name like sysprint sysout and system system and if you want to have the use i mean here comes the user defined dd name so data definition is nothing but so here if you want to create a data set <coughs> or a fluff file so this dd statement will be used okay so or uh, and we will check on why now, now we'll take one uh utility iefbr14 so what is this utility is doing is it is used to create a a data set okay so how many kinds of data sets we can create one is a ps file and other is a pds file so first what we'll do is first we'll create a ps file okay so uh, so ps file so the first thing is uh, you need to have the data uh, set name so what is the data set name so matkf dot test dot something input okay let me specify as input uh, inp okay input and uh, this equal to new so it's a new data set and i'm try i just you want me to, uh, you want this data set to be cataloged and if there is an error delete that particular data sets and the space can be measured in tracks and cylinders i'm taking it in a crack tracks so one is primary memory secondary memory secondary space and uh, 10 is a uh, further pds since now we are not using any pds ps pds so you can remove that and unit is called sysda or you can specify any of the unit and we can also have a volume there dcp parameters data set organization is a ps file or a, a pds or i mean you can just mention that or if you can leave it uh, i mean for a ps file you can keep it ps and the record format is a fixed block or a variable block or fba or vba so you can uh, specify that record format and the record length is 80 or any any kind of a record length that you want to create and the block size or you always i suggest you to keep zero so that system will allocate the block size so so now let me submit this jcl so now the jcl is uh, submitted successfully and uh, you got the input file created so if you want to go and check the input file if it is created or not just go to start type start and 3.4 on the command and then paste it here and see uh, you have the data set created so whatever the properties that you see here the same properties should appear uh, here if type yes beside this and you can see uh, the ps file with fixed block 80 bytes and uh, this is got created 
and uh, since we have mentioned the zero as a block size and it has created the default system allocated blocks as 27920 for a better processing for a better storage and uh, now let's go to spool and see how do we go to spool start as colon st so here you have a spool and then you can see the messages here uh, you can see all the diagnostic messages so how we are getting this diagnostic messages since you have defined message level equal to one comma one comma one and uh, message class equals to a you wanted to see the messages on the spool so that's the reason and the uh, message message level one comma one specifies what kind of a message you want to see at the exit level messages or a DD level messages so all these combined together you can see all the messages over here so that's how I mean last access that uh, allocated to sysprints is out and all these diagnostic messages that you can see here here and then the important thing is message log in the message log what you can see is at what time the job has started and at what time the job has ended so you can see the start time as 1921.30 and 1921.30 and what is the uh, do we have any procs here there is no procs and the step name is uh, step name or activity name is step one zero so you can see how many steps it's we have in this particular GCL or how many exit statement we have in exit here so we have only one so the one will be executed and the written code is zero for this on the successful execution of this uh, JCL so we got that particular uh, job got created so this is what this is something that we look at uh, the spool if there is any error also we will go here and we will see uh, the error so now let's go and uh, create the PDS so now since we have created the PS file the only difference is now what you can do is just you can specify the another uh, parameter within the tracks that is a T for uh, allocation of PDS so this is the only one thing that you can specify so now I'll specify as a test dot PDS PDS for practice PDS and uh, then submit so it should create that PDS so now it is ended with the zero so when I let me take this uh, data set name and uh, go to start 3.4 and uh, okay yeah and just see the properties of this so now you can see PO partition organization fixed block 80 bytes and uh, this has been created and the data set name type is PDS now if you want to create a member just type E here and uh, you can give the member name just and you can write the data uh, data 1 data 2 whatever the data you wanted to store you can store here within the member now if you open this now you can see how many members are there yes you have only one member so that one member you can see there okay so now that's how we can uh, that is the main purpose of uh, using uh, IE FBR 14 so you also have another if you want to delete the data sets uh, what you can do is uh, you can click I mean so not click sorry so this equal to old comma delete so uh, or if you mention this called old comma delete and the file name so that it will create delete the data set so now this completes the IFBR uh, 14 utility so where you can create a PS file and a PDS file and you can delete a PS file and the PDS uh, file okay so that's the IFBR 14 so the next one I wanted to talk is about the IEB Jenner and the IEB Jenner it's a JCL to copy a data from one PS to another PS or to take a backup or to, co to copy from input and load it into output so these are the several activities that you can do using IEB Jenner utility the main focus uh, the main thing that you need to monitor here is uh, CCUT1 and CCUT2 these are the system defined DD name that you need to mention if you are not mentioning this the this particular GCL will not execute and uh, another th important thing is when you need to know is this is in DD star is another uh, s uh, statement that you need to mention if you're not specifying this statement also the job will not execute so here what we are trying to do is we are trying to copy a data from one input to another output so we have a data set named as uh, input and so let me check what do I have here test uh, okay let me take some data uh, named as customer.info where I have all these records and what is the properties of this data set so it has an 80 bytes so just to make sure like whenever you're trying to copy you see the properties of the data set and uh, make sure the output 
will also have the same so customer dot info disp equal to share uh, then uh, test dot cust dot backup let me take like so I'm trying to take a backup of this input file so as I said block size keep always zero so that system will allocate it and make sure whatever the space that has enough space is allocated for your uh, for your data sets and uh, this be called a new catalog delete right let's submit this JCL and uh, so that it will copy now you can see the max CC is ended with zero so hopefully so the data whatever the data is there in customer dot info that should be uh, copied to uh, backup so let me copy these yes and now you can see all the entire data that was there in the source and that is being copied to the destination that is CCUT1 CCUT2 that is uh, customer.info is now successfully copied to this particular uh, data set so this is a main advantage uh, of uh, using the IB Jenner utility okay so then next coming back to another thing another utility so that is IEB copy so what does IEB copy do uh, it's a JCL to copy a PDS member from one PDS to another PDS so it's to copy all PDS member or to select specific PDS member or to exclude so I'm not going to execute this so just I'm go I'm go I'll walk through the JCL so what we are what are we doing here uh, IEB copy uh, sysprint sysout and uh, here also we need to make sure you have sysut1 and sysut2 dd names mentioned what is the main purpose of sysprint and sysu again it's a diagnostic messages related to this pro particular program will be routed here and you can see if there is any error or success or failure messages within this when you're specifying this and what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to copy uh, all the PDS members from the cobalt.practice to mtcjcl.practice.backup so that all the members will be copied from this particular PDS member to this PDM. what is the statement that we have to give what is the parameters that we need to pass on to this is in dd star copy in dd equal to ccut1 so whatever the dd name is ccut1 that you have to specify and now dd is called ccut2 that you have to specify so that it will copy all the members uh, pds member from one pds to another pds and the next one that we will see is uh, if i want to exclude exclude the uh, few members so then you can use uh, you can mention that specific members uh, separated by comma and uh, so that excluding this particular member rest of the members will be copied if you want to include include this particular member only specific uh, members you can just mention the specific members names here so that it will copy only those PDS member okay so this is uh, this is this was the another utility that we use uh, as part of the daily uh, or regular day-to-day -day task or in our real time and then next coming so far what are the things we have covered uh, IEB copy is done IEB general is done IEFBR 14 done IEFBR 14 used to create the data sets IEB general is used to copy a data from one PS to another PS file and uh, and uh, then uh, IB copy is to copy a selected selected PDS members from one PDS to another PDS and we've also seen the include and exclude option within the IB copy right okay so then we have another uh, uh, utility named as IB compare so IB compare is used to compare the two data sets so we have an alternate method also to compare the to compare it to two PS files or two PDS so so uh, you can use CCUT1, CCUT2, DD names uh, with uh, IEB compare utility and another way uh, to compare it to PDS member you have to write the pass parameters that is compare type org equal to PO so that it will compare uh, all the PDS members and results it okay so and another alternate way to compare uh, is 2.13 so where you can specify uh, two ps files and it will uh, check for uh, the comparison and it will show you the results so here since i don't have any data here i'm not able to show but this is the option that you can use it and it will show you all the in detail uh, what are the changes that's been made to any uh, specific file so let me show that customer.info.customer and info.cust.backup 
okay when I try to compare this or let me go and see if I have this yes uh, okay I have this file and uh, let's say USA okay I'm trying to compare this particular data sets okay yeah customer.info and uh, customer.info.backup okay yeah okay let me take this file okay so now you can see that uh, this has compared this particular data sets so you can see new data set name is this one so on the top uh, it will be the new one and this will be the this will be the old one so uh, you can see the differences in the new one inserted so these are the different lines of uh, data that has been inserted and these are the lines of data that's been deleted from the old data set so you can also read the messages saying like total to 14 total changes four paid changes 14 new file insertion come in the new file and old file for old file deletion so this is the mess these are the different uh, messages that you can see using IB I mean IB compare is a batch level and this is at the ISP level so it's uh, we can see we can also call it as an online right so that is that covers the another utility important utility IB compare so these four utilities that I mostly use I mean mostly is IB copy IB Jenner IFBR 14 and we also have another utility that is uh, ID camps uh, now I'm going to talk about that what is ID camps ID camps uh, utility will is used to create a GDG base what is GDG GDG is nothing but a generation data group what exactly the GDG uh, why GDG need to be used as uh, if you want to store a weekly data information within a PS file so how many uh, in a week five working days five days of uh, banking information or it can be related to the some insurance company health reports or anything uh, you may have to create five different data sets instead of creating a five different data sets you can create one GDG base and you can have you can keep multiple version to that particular uh, data set so here what I'm trying to do is uh, I'm trying to create a base for the GDG so to create a GDG base so you have to use an ID camps utility and then uh, you have to specify these parameters define GDG and uh, uh, you can specify the name of the GDG and limit no scratch and no empty these are the three parameters that we substitute to this GDG limit means maximum how many generations you can have is five and you can uh, uh, code up to 255 uh, uh, versions and the no scratch is to scratch and no scratch we we have two options scratch no scratch empty and no empty so scratch no scratch means uh, if you if your limit is uh, 5 so when you are trying to create another version of the uh, of the gdg it will immediately removes the latest version and keeps all the versions scratch means when the limit is uh, reached it will delete all the previous generations and it will try to create the new generations and empty is to uncatalog from the we talk okay so th that's how we create uh, this gdg let i submit this so it should create the gdg so now let's see if the gdg is created or not by going to 3.4 so now i can show you that uh, that GDG has been created so and you can see there is only there is no anything properties when you see this question mark symbol at the volume so that means this is but this is a GDG and if you specify as it will uh, when you type as at the command it will also show you pops up the message showing that it's a GDG base right so unlike on the for a physical sequential file when you see as it will show the properties of the particular thing in the same way if you want to see if you want to know this so it's just type as it will show show like it's a GDG base right okay I hope you got a clarity on this and next thing is what we'll do is we will try to create a uh, generation for this particular uh, GDG so how do we create a generation so generation is created uh, with an uh, utility named as uh, IEB Jenner so, so uh, which we have already seen so now uh, let me uh, type this it is equal to share okay yeah and then you can use this so that when you submit this it will create a a generations okay 
so now let me delete this and I can submit this so restart equal to what was step name step name was step 2 so step 2 so restart we will cover in the next in the next couple of minutes we'll cover what is t restart it's a bypass technique so now it is throwing an error p means dot weekly plus one so i don't know why it is throwing okay sorry so we need to have the data so let me take uh, okay let me take some other data so test dot cust dot info yeah i have this so let me take this information and copy this to this okay so customer information and submit this now you can see there is some sort of error okay it does it but ideally uh so this is the way we create uh, i mean this is how we create this uh we copy the data from uh a ps file to the generation okay so let me see what happened exactly here uh, test dot weekly payments dot weekly is that the one we created yeah right so okay so now anyway so it has created the generations and it didn't copy so there is some issue that you can ignore but uh, this is uh, generally this is the process that we follow so just I would want to uh, because since I haven't mentioned this is in DD star here so that is that's the reason it is not copying so let me submit this again okay now it has been copied so now how many generations I have created so totally three generations so for two generations since there was an error so there is no data when I browse it there was no data here and the uh, same for the second generation and uh, finally when I uh, browse this so you can see that particular data is being copied okay so uh, submit again so how many uh, it will uh, now you can see the fourth generation is created submit again now you can see that fifth generation is also created so since I have mentioned it has no scratch after submitting this what it should do it it should delete all the generation let's see what happens now so I have submitted so it went on with the JCL error and not sure why okay did I made any mistake there okay yeah okay let me sh take this and see okay restart equal to step 2 that works fine so ideally uh, mm, when I submit this so it should uh, let me go and see what the error is and uh, let's see the message data set for data sets uh, it's a volume no on so it's not able to execute this so it's better always uh, uh, always use uh, scratch and uh, why because no scratch is little danger so that it will delete all your uh, previous versions of the data sets I mean you can use it it depends upon the request that you uh, receive and uh, how you want it to maintain the GDG okay so now that's covers the GDG part okay so then next uh, next thing uh, I would like to show you is uh, how do we access the GDG generations so GDG generations uh, uh, how do you access the data within the GDG for example if you want to access the present version so you go with 0 uh, past version minus 1 minus 1 and uh, minus 1 and uh, pre previous past version so on so that way if you want to create a new 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 one so plus 1 with that is what we use it and again you can use the IB gener utility okay and the next one is how do we delete the GDG so just you mentioned the uh, delete command so I mean delete GDG with an ID cams utility just submit it so that it will delete the GDG uh, so that now you can see uh, the GDG is not existing and the GDG has successfully deleted right so then another thing that we to create a generation daily file yeah so that covers uh, the GDG part so now so far we have seen how many utilities IFBR 14 general copy compare ID cams so this covers all the things uh, all the important 
activities that we do in a JCL as in a developer or as a as in a tester as in a QA so these are as in a production support uh, uh, role that you are working on so these are the different activities that we do and the uh, other thing uh, that I wanted to show you is concatenating the two data sets if you want to merge two different input files into a one file so what you need to do is just don't specify the data set name so you can just specify two different uh, data sets here and you can merge into one output file so at maximum 255 data sets can be uh, merged uh, merged together into your one output file okay and you have to make sure like uh, the uh, space is properly allocated and the properties of the input and outputs are matching so this is how you you can merge two or you can concatenate two different data sets over here right so then again the compress uh, how do we compress the data sets if uh, it is a uh, full mm, okay so let me take okay for example when you want to compress anything so just type Z so the data set partition is okay uh, let me take test.pds okay yeah if just type Z here so that it will compress when sometimes the uh, PDS will be full when the memory is uh, completed the primary and secondary gets filled so you can when you compress so it will uh, it will try to allocate some memory on the unused space when you have created the members or when you are not using members inside that so that is another one that I wanted to tell you as part of this JCL and uh, then coming to the another important topics that is uh, bypassing techniques so bypassing techniques uh, is nothing but one second it got stuck here okay yeah what is bypassing techniques uh, is nothing but so you wanted to escape uh, you wanted to skip some scenarios some uh, activities based on the previous activity condition so like this we have uh, three different bypass techniques one is uh, using if condition other is using a cunt and other is using a restart so these are the three different uh, bypassing techniques that we use in a JCL so the first thing that uh, you I wanted to explain you is an if condition bypass so what we are doing here is you are in this particular step what you are trying to do you are trying to create a data set named as a MDK of test.sample file and uh, based on based on the condition uh, that is step one condition based on this particular step condition if step run condition return code equal to zero so then uh, what you wanted to do is you wanted to execute this particular step so if that step condition return code not equal to zero then this condition this step will be bypassed so if you have this type of conditions so then you can use if condition so this is about the if condition and then coming to uh, uh, another type of bypassing technique that is a uh, con condition so what is this this is uh, it is only will bypass the step so when you are using cunt equal to only at the specific step so this will bypass uh, this will this will this step will not execute okay so for example when I'm trying to since I'm using cunt equal to only then you submit this the j j uh, the job has ended so but it didn't uh, uh, run why because you have used cund equal to only so when you use cund equal to even okay regardless of anything this par this particular step will execute now now you can see that the job is ended with zero zero earlier it, it didn't run this step why because when you want to bypass any of the step when you don't want to run just simply specify cunt equal to only so that that particular step will not execute if you have five to six steps where you don't want to execute three and five so then go and type uh, use it as cunt equal to only at the three and five so that those two steps will not execute and the rest of the steps will be executing cunt equal to even means regardless of uh, uh, success or failure of the previous step you wanted to execute that particular step then you can use cunt equal to even so that particular step will be executed so this is the main uh, these are the two things uh, uh, this is one type of uh, 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 bypass technique within the cunt and another thing is uh, another by uh, type of bypassing technique is 
so based on the conditions that uh, you can use so let me search for okay yeah Where is the okay? F C Wendy. Okay. Okay. Here, what we can do is, uh, if you ask me, can uh, can can be used at the job level and exec level? Yes, we can use the condition at uh, job level and exec level. But mostly, we don't use the at the condition level. Mostly, with the production support team, and there is an issue for anything, so they may, they may try uh, using this. So. Uh, with condition at uh, the job level so there are uh, three things condition can be coded using uh, when you're specifying this condition at this particular step level so it's a what is this called as a written code a relational operator and this is a activity name right so what this is exactly doing is so uh, it is checking the previous condition previous step condition uh okay let me try to put it in different way okay what exactly this condition can when when this is equal so this particular step will be uh, bypassed when this is not equal so in that case it will be uh, uh, executing that uh, step so it is quite opposite to the if condition in if condition when the condition is true the you are telling uh, to execute that particular step in the condition when you are using condition parameter it is operative when the condition is true uh, you want it to bypass that step when the condition is false then you want it to execute that particular step it's very simple so it's quite just always some, sometimes some people will get confused over this just try to think it in a different way uh, for the if condition when the condition is true it is your executing but here when you're using condition it acts opposite when the condition is true it will bypass when the condition is false it will uh, execute so what are the different uh, relational uh, written codes that we can uh, range e 0 0 to uh, some 4095 so but mostly we use 0 0 0 8 12 and 16 or 0 4 and uh, relational operators that we have is equal to uh, not equal to less than greater than less than and greater than or equal to so these are the relational operators that we use so either you can use this type so when you are uh, coding this condition so it will check just check for the previous step so when you are writing this type of condition it will check for the specific step name and it will uh, check for the condition and it will run it so these uh, these are the two different things that we can use in using con okay so this covers the condition parts on how do we use then another one that we have is restart so restart is something that uh, when you want to run from run a specific step so you have like five steps within that five steps if you want to run the fourth step uh, or uh, you have submitted the job and you have five steps within that five steps three steps has been successfully executed and in the fourth step there was an upend and uh, you don't want to execute those three steps so what you can do what is the option that you have is a restart and you can restart from that step fourth so that uh, it will bypass all the uh, all the remaining three steps and it will execute only that particular sorry uh, particular steps so that is the main purpose of using restart okay so then coming to the next one so now we have completed the bypass techniques so then next coming to the next one uh, next very important one the sort utilities the sort is used as a filter option so here what we are going to do is you are trying to sort the information and uh, the data set ps file and copy to the output file so utility name is sort and uh, the dd uh, system dd system defined dd names that we use is sort in for input and sort out for output okay so here uh, what you, you have the input file and you are trying to sort if sort fields if you specify sort fields equal to copy so then uh, it means that it to just to copy so for example so you can also have the data member so you can you can either store in a member or uh, uh, regarding that so for example since I have stored in the code in the member so I can open this and see 
okay sort fields equal to copy so either way this way you can write or you can simply say I'll try to comment this so it's in the star okay delete this everything and uh, let's open this sort sort fields equal to copy so this is how we can use so what is doing it is this particular uh, activity or the step it is doing so this is just trying to copy the input file to output it is not sorting anything this is just to copy from one ps to another ps and the next one next important shortcut that we see here is uh, sort fields uh, either you can sort in ascending order or a descending order here here trying you're trying to sort uh, the input file in an ascending or a descending order so what we are trying to do sort fields uh, at the 33, 33rd position uh, uh, you are taking the uh, 33rd position in the input file and uh, its the length is 5 bytes and uh, its a character type and you are sorting it in a descending order or an ascending order if you type it as A it will be in an ascending order first what we will do is we will uh, take the input file and see how the data looks at here so you have this particular data and you have how many fields one two three four five so let's see uh, just I wanted to sort this data based on this zip code so this is a uh, let's say it is an employee number this is a name this is a city this is a state and this is a zip code so so zip code where it is starting uh, it's starting at the 39th position so what I can do is just I can write uh, 39th position and how many bytes it is it is of uh, 5 bytes so just mention it as 5 and it's a character either it's a numeric value or an it's alphabets so you can specify it as character and uh, how do you want to sort you want to sort based on the ascending order so is it in ascending order no right it's a mixed up so it's there is no specific order for this so when you run this particular step so uh, what it will do will see so for example step 0 1 is there uh, at the top so I don't want to execute the 0 1 step now okay uh, I wanted to directly run step 0 2 how to do that so just you can type restart uh, restart equal to step 0 2 so that uh, it will directly go to this step 0 2 and it will execute and if you don't want to run the remaining uh, steps so just end with this identifier and identifier and then submit it now you can see the JCL is submitted successfully we'll go to the log and see and uh, how the JCL looks at uh, let's see here just go to this out yes or before that uh, let's see what do we have here sorry uh, let's see the message here so now you can see the only step 0 2 is executed but whereas in my JCLs I have multiple steps here I have multiple steps though none of the steps are executed just only the step 0 2 has been executed okay so now this covers this uh, spool and uh, let us uh, check the output file customer dot customer dot info dot sort was there so now you can see all the data is being sorted ascending order so if you want to sort it in the descending order what is option you have to specify D and uh, submit it is ended with 0 so now you can see that it is sorted in a descending order so that's a very simple uh, sort that we use uh, regularly and the next sort that we will see is uh, uh, sort to start stop after copying selected how do we uh, copy a selected records I don't I'm not when you specify sort fields equal to copy it is not sorting but it is just copying if you want to apply a sort condition like this you can specify this and uh, you can copy you can uh, you can uh, do that okay here just I wanted to copy the data from input to output uh, and stop after 5 so that means I was just wanted to copy only 5 records here so how many uh, earlier it was there many files were there so here I just wanted to copy only uh, 5 records so in that case you can just uh, copy use a stop after stop after so that it will uh, 
copy only those five records so for example let me run this uh, it's a step 03 so if I want to execute only that particular step restart equal to step 03 submit so it ended with zero so now let's go back here and now you can see it has copied only those five records but the data is in not sorted so if you want to apply a sort logic here uh, while copying so what you can do so just copy this uh, earlier for the position we had right so just try to mention here the same and try to submit this and see what happens and with zero so now if you look at the uh, this so it has it has been sorted and copied along with this right instead of just copy it is sorted and also it applied another filter condition to just to copy only five right so it's similar way if you want to skip any specific records you can use a uh, another parameter that is a skip record so that it will skip first two records and uh, rest will uh, and rest of the records will be copied if you have 14 records it will skip the two records and it will copy other uh, rest of the 12 records and another uh, sort to eliminate the, the duplicate records uh, if you want to eliminate the duplicate record yes uh, uh, you can use some fields equal to none so that it will eliminate if there are any duplicates within the file and if you want to copy those duplicate records to another file you you can use sort xm so sort xm will uh, copy the duplicates into another uh, file so these are the different uh, uh, sort conditions that we can use another type of sort conditions you can uh, we have something called as inrec and an outrec inrec records are copied before the data is sorted and uh, this is another type of filter condition uh, what uh, we have a situation where uh, you have an input file with all the data and uh, you wanted to copy only specific fields for example I wanted to copy only first field within the data so you can specify uh, the 1 comma 10 so that it will copy only 10 bytes of information from the input file to output file or if you want to copy mm, a sp specific range for example if you specify what does this statement indicates so this one indicating like starting position of the input file I wanted to ch uh, take the starting position of the input file and its length is 10 bytes and its, its length is that means I'm trying to take the 10 bytes of uh, uh, 10 bytes from the input file which starts at one position and its length is 10 and where I wanted to put it in the output file at the first position that is in the first column I want to. so this covers the complete one field and another thing and in the same way starting position of the 15th column in the input file with the length 5 bytes I want to capture and where I wanted to put it I wanted to put it in the 15th position of the input file I mean sorry output file so this is the this is how we use it and outrec instead of inrec you can use outrec so both uh, will do the same thing but the only difference between inrec and outrec is rec inrec records are copied before the data is sorted and outrec records are copied after the data is sorted so this is the another difference another important shortcut that you can see is uh, simple sort using including condition so if you have any specific condition so if you want to copy copy the data based on some condition yes you can do that so for example uh, I wanted to copy uh, the records where the state is Ohio so in that case you can use this one include con uh, where what is the position where uh, you want me to check the data so that you can check that specific uh, position so for example you have uh, okay let me go to info.cust okay not this uh, um, yeah let's go here and see this uh, okay um, yeah which position is it is it it's in 36 right so now let's see uh, let's go to 36 and how many bytes it is is it's two bytes and checking for the character and which is equal to OH Ohio so just submit this and see uh, what happens now go to sort so now you can see only Ohio records are being copied. So if you can, if you want to write multiple conditions, you can give or and all these uh, operators you can uh, specify uh, logical operations or you can specify if you want to use an or condition. So if it is uh, if if I want to copy Ohio or uh, or any other codes, I mean. Uh, 
sorry uh, any other uh, maybe from new jersey also if you want to copy so you can copy new jersey as well and uh, so that way you can copy uh, the different records using uh, the include condition the another one that we want to store is merge two different files you can merge so using the merge command so here another uh, thing sort in 0 1 and sort in if you are using multiple input files you can uh, use sort in 0 1 and sort in 0 to dd names and the sort work is also used when you have the data with a large volume just better to use a working uh, f working directories i mean say say working temporary files so that it will copy all these datas okay so this is uh, that's it about uh, uh, the sort and the next one I wanted to cover is a temporary data set so what is a temporary data set is a uh, and it is just to copy a temporary uh, temporary data uh, where the lifespan of the data is till the job ends so when you are using two ampersand ampersand them so that means it will create the temporary data sets the, the difference between uh, uh, normal data set and the temporary data set is so you you will be using a parameter called as pass here so whereas there you will be using catalog catalog means it will store physically in the memory pass means it will bypass after the execution of the jcl so this is uh, the temporary data set so why i wanted to mention this temporary data set is when you are using uh, this bypassing technique so in bypassing techniques we had if condition cunt parameter i mean cunt uh, cunt equal to so and so conditions and uh, then you had the restart within the restart when you're trying to use a restart when you have some temporary uh, temporary file uh, and uh, you have there is an error and when you're trying to restart where the step is uh, where the step names input file is temporary it will again throw an error so we used to make sure like you copy the previous step I and mean, we you restart from the previous step so that's what I wanted to tell so so then next one is uh, talking about the procedures or a proc so what is a proc uh, uh, if you want to execute a reusable code so you will be writing a different jcl as a programmer you will be writing a different jcls right so where uh, you wanted to uh, you wanted to what do you what do we call this um, mm, reusable component right you have a set of a code so you have a step one and step two for example you take a jcl you have a step one that creates the uh, jcl i mean that that creates the ps file and step two will create the pds file and uh, you have 10 programmers and uh, programmer a who also want to create a data set and programmer uh, programmer a want to create one data set and one pds and programmer b also want to create one data set and one pds and maybe one gdg so all five different programmers working in five different projects so they initially they wanted to set up uh, some initial data sets like this so they want to have some gdg files some pds and one uh, ps file so all the all five projects have the same thing instead of writing three different statements in a three uh, in, a, in their respect to jcls so what we can do is we can create one member and the copy that code into one member and uh, save it as a member so that that member can be uh, called using their JCL so that is nothing but a procedure so within this procedure we have in stream procedure and uh, another is a catalog procedure when we say in in stream so in stream procedure in stream procedure is written within the PDS member uh, I mean within the JCL only catalog procedure which is written outside the uh, outside the member so for example let me take a procedure so procedure uh, how do we write the procedure procedure name followed by proc and then you can write the set of uh, dd names uh, i mean uh, activities so step one zero this is creating a data set okay so how do we call this procedure uh, by activity name exec and the proc name so this is how you call this what is this uh, single ampersand and data set so this is called as a symbolic parameter so uh, symbolic parameter is to uh, override if you uh, for example if you want to call this activity multiple times so then if I want to create multiple data sets here so 
if I call this particular activity, it will create only one data set if the symbolic parameter is not used. If the symbolic parameter is used, so you can change this to multiple times and you can create n number of data sets. You are not writing this step again and again, but whereas you are just telling, uh, calling the proc and you are overriding the symbolic parameter with just the data set name so that it will create the data set. So this is the uh, main uh, purpose of using in-stream catalog, but in real time we don't use in-stream catalog much. We use only uh, uh, ex or external catalog. So that is catalog procedure. So what the catalog, how the catalog procedure looks. So first, as I said, piece of code need to be written in a separate member, right? Let me go uh, to this particular member and show you how the proclip looks. So this is the proclip member. So you have created the member in the member. So I'll be having just forget about these two lines in the beginning. So how many steps you have step 01 and step 02. Step 01 is what it is creating some input file and another is output file. Okay. As I mentioned in the catalog procedure, we use a symbol uh, in stream catalog. Uh, we use the symbolic parameters. How many symbolic parameters can be used in the file name? So you can use a many, many uh, symbolic parameters. So mostly we use three or four symbolic parameters to the file name. So here I'm using the environment and uh, I'm using the job name right so environment can be model test prod okay job names the job which you are running so to make sure unique so as I told you right so we have five different programmers working on different projects so and they will be having a different job names so if they just override this job name so that they can use that particular uh, data set I mean to make it unique so this is the main purpose of overriding and another thing by default when they are calling this proc what is the value that need to be appeared here so it can be a prod so by default it will apply this uh, two values when they are not trying to override when they are calling this proc okay and uh, proc name it's a 8 bytes proc uh, by 8 byte names and then you are using the symbolic parameters and you are trying to specify the default value what need to be appeared at these places okay so now let's go to JCL and see how we call this so in order to call the member I mean in order to call the PDS what you need to have you need to have the JCL lib order uh, by the proc name and then uh, you will be calling uh, this particular proc uh, you will be specifying the activity name and then it, this can be anything ACT or BCK or whatever it is so you can specify your activity name and then uh, you swear you call this proc name and then environment it's either it's a test environment or model environment or a production environment or a QA environment and you can you can you can also override this particular job name as well so so you can just uh, specify another one take this and uh, you need to specify a comma here and then when you submit this this proc so this will take this maybe programmer y we may have another job name so and they ca he can also call using this statement jcl order and the activity name and the overrides so this is how we use the catalog procedure so so what are the things that we have covered so far right so we have covered the job cut uh, we have uh, uh, what all we have let me go step by step mm. Okay, first one we cover job card, uh, where we have the job operand followed by the job name, then contains the uh, programmer name, accounting information, keyword parameters, and the positional parameters. Then we later discuss about the positional parameters and keyword parameters, positional parameters at the job level and at the exit level and uh, at the DD level what are the different keyword parameters that we use when we are creating an, uh, our data sets what is job what is exec and what is DD statement that we have seen and the different IBM utilities like IABR14 IB Channel and ID Camp the important things the GDG uh, in GDG we have seen the different parameters like scratch no scratch MT no MT all these uh, options that we have seen how do we access the data sets like zero means what uh, minus one minus two and the plus one and how to how the base is created what is the limit and how do we copy f and what about the uh, versions and how to identify it's a file is a GDG base or not so that things we have seen and the bypassing statements uh, we have seen several bypass statements like uh, 
bypassing techniques like uh, if candy if uh, uh, cand and restart and then we have seen a uh, sort different kinds of sort techniques that we have seen for is equal to copy uh, xm in rack out rack and all those things include conditions and then we finally we have seen the proc within the proc uh, in stream proc and catalog proc okay okay thanks thanks so much for watching this video i thought of covering uh, everything all the jcls into your one video i hope this may be a little lengthy but if you watch this video i i hope it recalls everything about the jcl if you do like this video kindly please do subscribe or uh, post your comments on the below comment section your comments are very much needed to me so that it it makes me happy or i can improve on uh, uploading any new videos I, I of course you can give me some suggestions on what kind of videos you are looking on or if you are looking on any other information on the mainframe okay thanks a lot thank you